Hello everyone, welcome back to True Play Analytics. My name is Sasank. Today we will not be doing a 100 word analysis. Instead, we're going to be looking at a new segment of mine called Sports Models Discussions. So, in this segment, uh, it's going to be a bit more longer segment instead of just the quick 100 word quick analysis. Uh, instead, I'll be discussing either new and upcoming models used um, in, you know, uh, hockey, baseball, the NFL, the NBA, uh, any major North American sport, either discussing current models that exist, or um, in, including statistics as well, for example, like WOBA or WAR to kind of explain them, or we're talking about models and statistics I create when I do my own personal analyses of players, uh, like, you know, shots per goal, kind of uh, in the future I'll be, you know, talking about that in particular since that's one that I've kind of really looked, taken a look at and flushed out. Uh, but today we're going to be looking at a few machine learning models I uh, created uh, to analyze shots in the NHL. So uh, I have made a website, an interactive website to kind of look at this and understand it for everybody. Also, I've hosted all the code I uh, wrote on GitHub. So both those links will be in the description below if you want to also go personally spend some time on it. So without further ado, let's hop in and I'll show you the website right here. Excuse me, there we go. So uh, this is the website, it's uh, hosted on my personal website. And before we get dive directly into looking at uh, the models, uh, I'd like to say that I wrote all this in R and the data I used came from uh, moneypuck.com. They host uh, shot data, um, pretty much shot by shot since I think the year 2008 in the NHL uh, for free on their website. So big thanks to them and being able to make uh, the data I need uh, you know, available to use for free. Uh, and in R, I do need a few extra packages for visualization as well as the machine learning. Uh, base R just won't work. So for the machine learning, uh, I used a package called Carrot. Uh, Carrot is a package of packages. It's a collection of tons of different machine learning packages. Um, and then also do parallel helps that. It makes, uh, you can parallelize your algorithm training and prediction uh, since Carrot does use, you know, specific for loops and whatnot, much more implementation level, uh, as well as ggplot2, ggplot, uh, if you are familiar with R, uh, is a very, very standard tool when creating uh, very nice, clean graphics. Uh, so uh, let's first just dive into the, uh, the kind of data preparation and kind of the, the problem question which my models are addressing. So the question the models I created are addressing are, the question is, is it possible with minimal information about a shot to determine if uh, determine the probability it has of scoring a goal with you know high accuracy. So let's break up that problem and kind of discuss how these models will attack it. So the first part is given a shot, an NHL shot with minimal information. So what I define minimal information is having four uh, identifiers for the shot. Uh, you have the x coordinate, y coordinate, the angle of the shot on goal and the distance uh, the shot was taken from the net. So um, in the money puck data set, uh, this is gonna be the X coordinate adjusted, the Y coordinate adjusted, the shot angle adjusted, and the shot distance. Uh, obviously we'll need a comparison, so we'll need to find out whether or not that shot was a goal. Uh, but uh, either, but you know, the, in the end, we're looking at these four, um, you know, the X, Y, which I pair together kind of as one most of the times, that coordinate pairing uh, the angle and the distance to see if just from where the shot comes from we can determine if it's going to be a goal or not with high accuracy. Now, most shots in the NHL have accuracy, have you know, chance, uh, predicted chances just based off of the shot itself. No player screening, no you know, you know power play versus penalty kill versus breakaway versus you know three on three. No situations. Just removing all situational aspects, most shots in the NHL have a low chance of scoring. Uh, that's just because goalies cover a lot of the net, and most shots, uh, the accuracy needed to pinpoint the corners, 
or you know shoot right between you know the glove and the uh, in the left pad or right pad if it's a right, if it's a you know right catch and goalie that accuracy is so so sm it, there's not many players that have that sort of accuracy there are very few I can I can name uh, some being you know like Phil Kessel Patrick Kane Alexander Ovechkin you know Patrick Laine these guys who we see as snipers as elite snipers. They have this accuracy, but it's not very common around the NHL. So this is this is kind of what we're looking at initially as our input data in the models. So there are two types of models I created. The first is a neural network, and the second is a k-nearest neighbors algorithm. So let me explain what exactly both of those do before we jump into training them and understanding what training does. So a neural network model is a model, uh, well a neural net or neural network is kind of during the 1970s what scientists, data scientists and computer scientists uh, thought how the brain worked, how the neurons and synapses in a human brain work. So they designed a very very rudimentary simple way of looking at it where you have each individual input data point uh, or data data entry or um, the keys to the data or what exactly the data was called for us we have x y angle of distance is its own separate entry point and then it's going to be almost a weighted average based off of some function we have uh, this function is what kind of transforms our data and we, what we train our model to change and to become more accurate so initially what most algorithms use is something called a sigmoid function uh, or it's a, it's a type of, uh, it's just 1 over 1 minus x. That is what we define as a sigmoid function in machine learning. So we initially start with that base function and then we'll start changing parameters, changing what the function is. Sometimes it ends up being linear, sometimes it ends up being quadratic, and sometimes it ends up being this long mess of mess, messy algebra which to us we won't really understand but to the computer what that means is it's just a way of changing the input information properly weighting it and then aggregating it adding it all up together to get this value this probability so this kind of caps our data being between our, our output information between zero and one so this is actually very very easy for a computer to do to give you a probability instead of giving you an exact number. So whenever you see a, a prediction for, um, for the amount of goals scored by a player, uh, it's very hard to build a machine learning model that will tell you that, how many goals the player will score. Instead, what you can do is use kind of linear regressions to determine how many shots the player will take, and then use a model to determine whenever the player shoots, what's the probability of it scoring, and then combining those two together to get a predicted or expected uh, number of goals scored. That's uh, one way, you know, the NHL, multiple agencies, multiple websites will calculate and predict their expected goals and kind of model player growth. So a neural network, going back to it, is pretty much a weighted sum which uh, models how the brain works, uh, the human brain works. A k-nearest neighbors algorithm is extremely different. The neural network looks at every single piece of information and builds itself. A k-nearest neighbors algorithm actually is pretty cool because you put in a point, you enter a point in the entire data set. You're going to specifically look at one point. And you're going to look at the neighbors around it, so the points that are closest around it. Whenever you look at those points, that will help determine whether or not our value is going to come out as a 1 or a 0. As a goal, 1, or a 0, no goal, or save, or a shot off target, whatever it is, the opposite of goal. And then you do that multiple times, multiple iterations, on multiple values of k. K in K nearest neighbors is the number of neighbors you're going to look at. So for very small data sets, we'll have like three nearest neighbor, five nearest neighbor. But for large data sets, you'll get like 127,000 nearest neighbor, 
whenever your data set has, you know, uh, points in the values of the, the millions and billions of numbers you're looking at. In this case, we're looking at around 600,000 uh, pieces of information when we're training our data. So, K in this case will probably fall in between, uh, I believe, it should be around 30 at maximum, um, because you don't want to look at too much information, uh, because then it's extremely slow and won't train it's going to be extremely slow and won't be as accurate. Because if you imagine plotting all of your points uh, for a k-nearest neighbor algorithm, if you imagine plotting them all on a graph, what a k-nearest neighbor algorithm does is really draw boundary lines to separate the information, to separate the data. So that's what a k-nearest neighbor does. It's kind of sifting and creating groups of the data. While a neural network takes an information and mathematically will create an output to create a linearized a linear sum so it'll have the sum of different functions together to get that probability while the k nearest neighbors will create groups that'll say okay all of these shots around here will have assigned a probability of you know 0 0.13 so 13 percent chance but then shots over here that match this information will have a probability of 23 percent or of two percent like that. That's how a K nearest uh, neighbors algorithm works. So let's actually look at how I did them. Um, so there was initially when I trained the models, uh, I had a repeated CV or actually it's a repeated sum. I uh, did that five times, uh, two repeats. So that's my control model. Each, whenever training the neural network and the uh, K nearest neighbors, there must be a control model that the data can be compared to, to in order to determine how accurate the model is to kind of maximize its accuracy. So here we train the neural network and down here we train the k nearest neighbors algorithm. Uh, the neural network we determine has 31 weighted values. So in that large sum, that linear sum, that weighted average, there are 31 points. So there's 31 steps the neural network takes and then it'll output our probability and it iterated over, it, it tested iterating it over a hundred times, actually at a hundred iterations, to make sure that it was accurate. So it updated those 31 values a hundred times and created the final network. The K nearest neighbors algorithm, um, it doesn't, so whenever running it in R, uh, it won't, t it doesn't explicitly tell you the value of K, but I believe on its most accurate, the value of K is around uh, 23. So now let's look at the data we're going to use. So uh, in this data, it's called Analysis 2018. I'm looking at the 2018 uh, shot data, so 2017-2018 shot data from last season. Uh, so we have x, y coordinates here. We have the angle, uh, which is between 0 and 90, or actually 0 and 180. Uh, but it's very rare to see you know, those very low angle shots, very high angle shots. Most, the best shots come... Um, if I'm the goalie, uh, they should come almost directly on, but slightly to the left and slightly to the right, uh, just because the shot will come at an off angle, uh, and I have to be, I, I won't be able to uh, cut down the angle on the shot, since more of the net is available behind me. We have uh, uh, the distance towards, uh, the distance of the shot towards the net, uh, and then for kind of uh, sifting purposes and subsetting purposes to do more specific analysis. I'm including the team and also whether or not the shot was a goal. So then when we use our prediction, uh, we predict um, on this 2018 data, uh, the data I used to train the model uh, came from uh, all the data, so 2017, 2016, 2015. So I used three seasons worth of data and tested it on a season's worth of data, just to make sure they kind of see how the how teams did. So, looking at extracting the predictions, we see that now we have a prediction column uh, that tells me uh, a percentage or a, a probability between zero and one. So we see this is zero point zero five, so five point nine percent, two point three percent, sixteen point one percent. That's a pretty high percentage shot compared to what's considered to be around average nowadays. 
of you know around five percent or around six percent those shots are average shots the higher probability shots are most likely you know shots from the slot which you know what we would think you know as, uh, as analysts think that you know shots from the slot area uh, usually have a higher chance of scoring shots from that area so from those distances and those positions so therefore angles having shots from there that usually mean should dictate we have a higher chance of scoring uh, so our models actually let's go and kind of look at a few uh, what, what the models say for a few teams to see if our models really uh, really show our in, whether our intuition is correct or not uh, you know shots from the slot are uh, you know, have a better chance of scoring than other shots. And if it answers our, our question of, you know, given uh, a shot point with minimal information, can we determine if uh, it has a chance of scoring with high probability? We know it can determine it. Now we want to know what it determines and if that really makes sense. Can I give ourselves a sanity check? So visualizing it, this is, this is just for the NHL uh, from the neural network, so that all of all the teams in 2017, 2018, this is kind of what it showed. This graph right here, and I want I want to take a quick chance, uh, to take a little aside to talk about this because it's pretty interesting to see that first we see that the darkness, how orange or yellow that this this the hexagon is, is the amount of shots taken from there. So we see that shots taken from around a little above 50, but a little under 62 feet, so probably around 57, 58 feet, there were a lot of shots taken from there. That seems to be a, a kind of a, a sweet spot around the NHL in general, but it has under 0.1 probability, so under 10% chance of scoring. But as we move closer to the net, as we move super close, we see that we, we skyrocket to where some shots at like one foot have pretty much 50% chance of scoring. Well, that's pretty crazy. Now, I argue that most shots before five feet are not actual shots on net. They're not wrist shots, snap shots, slap shots, backhanders, none of those. Instead, they are wraparounds and deflections or tips. Those, in essence, are redirections of the puck when the goalie is already making is already in the action of making a save of going to make a save on a shot that should have a trajectory that the goalie should stop but an offensive player you know with his stick or with his body somehow in a non-kicking motion or non-swatting or headbutting something like that with his stick pretty much has tipped it or deflected the puck to change its, uh, its uh, trajectory, its expected trajectory. Those shots usually have a high chance of scoring just because it requires the goalie to make a very split second reaction save if possible. And sometimes it is impossible for them to make that reaction save and the saves solely come from their positioning and their soundness and how they've positioned themselves to make the original save. So most of this high probability information here, I believe, comes from tips. That being said, there are certain players that can, you know, tip pucks on net while maintaining the velocity of the puck from, you know, the middle of the slot. I don't know, I'm pretty much talking about Sidney Crosby, and that's it. But there are players that, that can do that. Those shots, those, those long distance tips would fall out here but they're so small, the count of them is sub 50 in the entire season, pretty much, that that amount of data does not skew uh, any of the information, any of the predictions. So back to the now the predictions, the neural network says that, you know, our, that the, the ideal spot that's not a deflection or tip that teams have shot from is pretty much right here right here now that point or that information that's a little under 12 feet a little under 12 feet i'd say around eight nine feet that's a very 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 good place to shoot the puck from eight or nine feet if we just draw a semicircle around the net from eight or nine feet that is 
pretty much the lowest point you can get in the slot to where you can really give a good wrist shot with somewhat of a follow through and you have enough space distance between you and the net to elevate the puck at any elevation you could slide it on the ice or you could go top shelf and you know right underneath the crossbar and score there this eight foot range that is the prime probably the highest probability place to score from the neural network states from the entire league that is not a tip or deflection now the inner hockey player and the the in a lot of analysts and hockey players actually will agree this is an exceptionally good place to shoot from however pretty much under around one in every ten shots will go in it is very hard to score on a goalie who is who is set ready it is one-on-one -on -one, skater versus goalie from that position on the ice is extremely hard to score from there extremely hard because the goalie just takes up so much space you would have to shoot the puck in such a quick release that the goalie would have zero minimal time to react however that can't happen most players just don't have a release that quick if they do it's because the puck was they were already shooting before the puck even got to them and it was more of a you know bang bang you know one timer give and go type of play but it seems to be that the closer you are to the net the better you have the better chance you have and this is for distance versus uh, distance versus you know probability scoring for the neural network if you look at the angle now we could also look at the angle right here so this graph right here shows us the, the probability of scoring versus the angle of the shot on net for the neural network the end and net for short and we see here that we take a lot of shots from I would I would say almost close to being head-on but a bit more to the to where the goalie is standing to face his left side a little bit more um, this is around 30 degrees 32 33 degrees we take a lot of shots from there apparently those shots have a really bad chance of scoring so even though we put a lot on net it doesn't happen the NHL a lot of players just don't score from there now if we start looking at different angles for example these really 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 sharp angles these zero percent angles these these zero degree angles those have a really high chance of scoring now probably because the data here is so small we see that almost all of them if you shoot from a really sharp angle score well that makes sense it should the the model is just stating that okay yeah there's a lot of very specific information now at this point says okay I could go in so sure it could go in but I think we start seeing that these high probability shots come from 25 degrees from around you know 62 degrees looking at the net as 45 degrees for horizontal or 90 degrees as being you know all the way over here zero degrees being here we see that 25 and 62 are really where the goalie is turned and where the goalie might be moving left to right to where these shots are kind of horizontal passes would well, this make sense then so we pair those two together pair the the distance and the angle together we see that the the shot has to come from the low slot and has to come from either side it can't be in the middle right in front of the goalie it has to come from his left or right well the only way that truly happens is with a horizontal pass across or the sh or the pass from behind the goal line in front of the goal line and the shot is towards the opposite side of the goalie well that just sounds like a power play situation to me where you have horizontal passes or passes from below the goal line to above the goal line and maybe across ice or it sounds like you know a 2-1-1 and how that occurs so we really see that these high scoring chances really dictate how the how this neural network shows the neural network really it's it, it matches our intuition which is what it should it should match our intuition because it's made to kind of quote unquote think like a human and it does so the neural network can solve our problem which is good it solves our problem of our problem statement of given very 
specific information about a shot and very minimal information about a shot, can we determine with high probability if it has a chance to score? The neural network can do that and it matches our intuition and it matches data, real life data from the NHL. So we see that the neural network looking at NHL data works perfectly. Now, I'm not going to spend as much time on the K-nearest uh, neighbors model just because it's not as accurate. But it also, it, it does some very interesting stuff. Like the neural net, it agrees that shots near the net that, that probably are tips and wraparounds have a very high chance of scoring. But it, then it says, okay, everything else is just kind of, it doesn't really know. It says, yeah, I have a high chance of scoring right here when you're, you know, almost 20 feet away. But you also have a really high chance of scoring when you're 62 and a half feet away, when you're close to the blue line. So like a slap shot, or a really good placed wrist shot, or when you're halfway across the rink, probably empty nets. The k nearest neighbor doesn't think like a human. It's not meant to. It's meant to give an estimate based off of its neighbors based off of the data around it which makes sense shots from this area that 20 feet away those are shots where elite snipers like to shoot that distance so it says a lot of shots not a, not a lot of shots a good amount of shots probably 200 ish have come from here and a lot of them have scored well i'm going to say okay yeah this makes sense a good amount maybe 200 ish have come from this 62 and a half and 30% have scored. Well, I'm going to give this a good chance of scoring then. And if we look at the angles, we get something very, very similar as well. We see that some shots have almost 80% chance of scoring when it's at such a low angle. 80%. I want to compare this to the neural network who said those shots had around 50%. Almost 80 compared to 50 this K nearest neighbors algorithm, though it does kind of corroborate, it does show that our intuition is correct, it doesn't show it for the right reasons. It's like when you answer, you get a question right on the test, but you don't show your, you don't do the right work to get to the correct answer. You got the right answer, but you got the wrong work. The K nearest neighbors algorithm is like that. It's got the right answers, but for the wrong reason. The, the reason it says that is because it believes that there's a bunch of data similar around this specific point, this specific type of shot that, that we say is, you know, low slot, uh, low slot, medium angle, let's call it that. It says, yeah, that works. That should be where you should shoot from because, well, the rest of the data says that. Well, that, that in essence is right, but the reasoning isn't that. The neural net reasoning is because... It says that after iteration of iteration of trying, I've narrowed my field down to saying these are the areas. But the K nearest neighbor just, is let, just says, you know, oh yeah, my friends around me say that this is right, so I'm going to say it's right. They're both, they both give the same answer, but the K nearest neighbors doesn't give the same answer correctly. doesn't give the right reasoning. So um, that'll probably be, that's going to be everything I'll talk about this specific model uh, right now, if you're very, if you're interested in seeing specific teams, I've done analysis on the Penguins, the Bruins, the Lightning, the San Jose Sharks, the National Predators, and the Los Angeles Kings. Uh, you know, creating graphs, kind of showing exactly what those teams have done. But this has been, uh, this is the first one of the first models I created using machine learning. So, I want to thank you for you know sticking around, you know, listening and learning about this. And if you want to hear me talk about any certain statistics or models out there, leave a comment down below. Tell me what exactly I should look at. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good day.